Nearly 200 earthquakes were recorded in Yellowstone National Park in the past two weeks. It is just a hint of what's brewing right here in the U.S. Scientists have long known that Yellowstone National Park sits atop a huge supervolcano. But what they've discovered... Yellowstone National Park remains a remarkable place of total awesomeness, attracting millions of people to itself every year. But if you're attracted to honey, you must be aware that there are bees. Recently, something seems to be rumbling beneath the Earth's surface, and park officials have just reported swarms of earthquakes in their hundreds. Does danger lie ahead? Will the supervolcano finally erupt? Keep watching to find out. All hands are currently on deck as scientists and park officials watch with rapt attention as the Earth rages beneath Yellowstone National Park. We dare not say that the park has always been quiet, but recent events will wow you. Windows of residents' homes in the vicinity have been left shaking alongside the ground. Sadly, this is happening too excessively to ignore. Since July 2022, there have been over 800 earthquakes in the Yellowstone Arena, most of which occur in the Grizzly Lake region. Nearby residents were getting worried about this when the shocker came that the worst was yet to come. On the 29th of March 2023, the park was hit with 60 consecutive earthquakes, all within just 12 hours, causing citizens to panic even more. These earthquakes on the Richter scale range between minus 0.1 to 3.7. With so many questions being asked, Yellowstone National Park's officials soon declared openly that swarms of earthquakes like this have been frequent in Yellowstone National Park. They've also added that, recently, swarms of earthquakes in their hundreds have also hit the park. But this statement raises even more questions. What is the reason for the ongoing number of earthquakes? Should America be worried? The answers will interest you. What is happening within the Yellowstone National Park? To answer this question, we need to understand Yellowstone National Park. The park is indeed a spot in the United States of America that most people love. Perhaps your trip to America wouldn't be complete without seeing it yourself. Yellowstone National Park is a renowned national park, located primarily in the U.S. state of Wyoming, with smaller portions of it extending into Montana and Idaho. The park is about 151 years old, as it was established in 1872, making it hold the reputable spot of being the first national park in the world, even while it's widely considered the cornerstone of the national park system in the United States. On a first trip to the park, you'd be overwhelmed by its size, as Yellowstone spans approximately 2.2 million acres, making it one of the largest national parks in the contiguous United States. Imagine Alice going through the big wonderland, and you can guess the feeling of the park's visitors. There's so much to see in this park, and perhaps an exploration of the park would lead you to one of its darkest secrets the Yellowstone Caldera. One of Yellowstone's most distinctive features is its geothermal activity. It'll amaze you that the park contains more than 10,000 hydrothermal features, including hot springs. These are pools of water that are heated by geothermal energy. These hot water pools can range in temperature from warm to the boiling point, and they often have brightly colored mineral deposits. There are also fumaroles, which are vents in the ground that emit steam and gases. These gases can be poisonous, so staying away from fumaroles in case you ever visit is important. Moving on, there are also mud pots, which are simply pools of hot, acidic mud. This mud is constantly boiling and bubbling, which can be quite colorful. The next are geysers. Surprisingly, Yellowstone National Park is home to about half of all the geysers in the entire world, having more than 500 geysers. This includes the iconic Old Faithful, which erupts approximately every 90 minutes. For a better understanding, geysers are hot springs that periodically erupt, shooting hot water and steam into the air and providing a stunning view while at it. Other than the Old Faithful geyser, the most famous geyser in Yellowstone, there are many others, including Grand Prismatic Spring, Castle Geyser, and Steamboat Geyser. The Yellowstone Grand Canyon is another stunning 24-mile-long canyon formed by the erosive action of the Yellowstone River as it flows through the park. 
The canyon features vibrant colored rock formations and spectacular views, attracting millions of visitors annually. This stunning canyon showcases the Yellowstone River flowing through a deep and colorful gorge, with two prominent waterfalls, the upper and lower falls. The scene from the canyon's different viewpoints will blow the beholder away. Lest we forget, this park is also a haven for wildlife, providing habitats for numerous species in a natural setting. When visiting, you would have the opportunity to see the bison, elk, moose, deer, grizzly bears, black bears, wolves, and a variety of smaller animals firsthand. Indeed, the park has played a significant role in developing the conservation movement, inspiring the protection of natural areas and wildlife for future generations. As the largest high-elevation lake in North America, Yellowstone Lake also offers picturesque views and opportunities for boating, fishing, and lakeside camping. There's also a wide range of outdoor activities such as hiking, camping, fishing, boating, and wildlife watching. The park experiences all four seasons, with snowfall common in the winter months, creating winter sports like snowshoeing and cross-country skiing opportunities. Numerous trails also range from easy strolls to challenging backcountry hikes. Within this same park are historic sites, and there are quite a number of them, and they include the old fateful inn built in 1904, one of the largest log structures in the world and a national historic landmark. Now, suppose you tour all these wonderful sites. In that case, you'll come across something that stands out and speaks of ancient catastrophic events in this region. We're talking about the Yellowstone Supervolcano, which has been a sleeping terror in the region for millions of years. And in case you didn't know, a supervolcano is a type of volcano capable of producing an extremely large and powerful volcanic eruption. Of course, these eruptions are characterized by ejecting immense volumes of magma, ash, and gas into the atmosphere, making the eruptions of typical volcanoes look like child's play. The term supervolcano is used to describe only these extraordinary volcanic systems, which have the potential to cause significant global impact due to the large scale of their eruptions. In simple terms, the eruption of a supervolcano is much more explosive and devastating than regular volcanoes. So, instead of a typical one-shaped volcanic mountain, supervolcanoes often form vast, caldera-shaped depressions, which result from the collapse of the volcano's magma chamber after a massive eruption. This caldera can be tens of kilometers in diameter, and this typically describes the Yellowstone caldera. Indeed, the beautiful Yellowstone National Park sits atop a massive volcanic caldera, and as a matter of fact, all the previously mentioned geothermal features within the National Park are a result of the underlying giant magma chamber which characterizes the caldera, and in turn, generates the heat for the Yellowstone geothermal features. The Yellowstone supervolcano is a very old feature in the region, estimated to be around 2.1 million years old. Yellowstone has experienced several massive eruptions throughout its history, each leaving a profound impact on the landscape and the global climate. The first known eruption of the supervolcano was the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, which rocked the Earth about 2.1 million years ago. This was one of the most significant volcanic events in the park's history. It expelled an estimated 600 cubic miles of volcanic material, creating a vast caldera known as the Island Park Caldera, still visible in parts of Idaho today. About 800,000 years after the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, another massive eruption was known as the Mesa Falls eruption. This eruption created the Henry's Fork Caldera, which is now buried beneath later volcanic deposits and is part of the larger Yellowstone Caldera system. The Lava Creek eruption is Yellowstone's most recent and most famous eruption, occurring approximately 640,000 years ago. It produced the Yellowstone Caldera as we know it today, with a caldera that spans approximately 30 miles by 45 miles. The eruption expelled about 240 cubic miles of volcanic material, covering vast areas of the western United States with ash and debris. That was the last time we encountered the Yellowstone supervolcano in action. Though the supervolcano has laid dormant since then, it's important to note that Yellowstone is still an active volcanic system. 
As scientists note, a future eruption of the Yellowstone caldera would have significant regional and global impacts. Following the release of the volcano's massive amounts of volcanic ash, gases, and aerosols into the atmosphere. This would greatly affect the climate and potentially cause widespread disruption to human activities. This is not to mention the amount of lives that might be lost given the region's recent population. According to Michio Kaku, a renowned American physicist, an eruption of magnitude 8 from the Yellowstone supervolcano can tear the gut out of America. Now, why exactly are the numerous earthquakes happening in Yellowstone National Park? It's important to remember that the recent swarms of earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park are part of a common phenomenon in the region. Yellowstone National Park is one of the most seismically active regions in the world, and the park has experienced more than 40,000 earthquakes since 1973. According to the United States Geological Survey USGS, the region experiences 700 to 3,000 earthquakes annually. These figures are quite huge, if you ask us. But it should also be noted that these earthquakes are mostly not harmful, with some even going completely unnoticed. One thing is outstanding about the recent swarm of earthquakes, though, and it has something to do with their depths and location. Usually, other swarms of earthquakes are known to spread out across different locations in the park. But things are different this time, as the past few months have been characterized by numerous earthquakes which all seem to be happening in the same region. Most of these earthquakes have been recorded around the tallest geyser in the park, the Steamboat Geyser. But the question is, why exactly are these earthquakes happening? Let's talk about the sources of the earthquakes. Now, note that swarms of earthquakes can occur in various locations with volcanic or tectonic activities and are stirred up by different causes. Some of these earthquakes can be generated when magma-filled cracks push their way through the Earth's crust. Another more common cause of some earthquake swarms might be when water enters an existing fault in the crust and interacts with it, thereby stirring up the quakes. This is a point to note, as there currently seems to be a lot of water in Yellowstone. Again, owing to the mid-atmospheric river events of 2022, wherein there had been numerous droppings of several inches of rain on the park during the late snowpack season in the middle of June, there's even more water in Yellowstone. This phenomenon even led to the closing of the park and the north and northeast entrance roads at that time. Indeed, scientists agree that earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park are caused by water, and this is how it happens. The water in Yellowstone is heated by magma beneath the surface, becoming a trigger. As the water is heated up, it expands and creates pressure. The pressure can cause the rocks that make up the crust to break, resulting in an earthquake. In addition, there are also instances wherein the water in Yellowstone can also help to lubricate the faults already present in the crust. This lubrication can make it easier for the faults to slip, which can also lead to earthquakes. We could refer to good examples of a scenario like this. One good example is the 1959 Heb Gen Lake earthquake, the largest earthquake in historical times in the Intermountain West. This earthquake, however, is thought to have been caused by water. The earthquake occurred when a fault ruptured beneath the Madison River, and the river's water helped lubricate the fault and make it easier for it to slip. So, from this example, it's clear that the water in Yellowstone also plays a major role in the park's seismic activity. And truth be told, it's likely that earthquakes caused by water will continue to occur in the park as long as the water is heated and pressurized. But here's the big question. Are the numerous swarms of earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park magma-related or due to water causes? Indeed, it's no news that magma plumes underneath the Yellowstone caldera are rising fast recently. Many scientists believe this plays a major role in the recent swarms of earthquakes in the region. But the United States Geological Survey explains it better when they say that this phenomenon of earthquakes is related to the process whereby volcanic fluids are transported along many small fractures within shallow rocks over the magma. According to experts, earthquakes occur due to the shifting and adjusting of the Earth's crust due to the movement of these magma fluids. 
We must also note that these earthquakes are not entirely bad in themselves, as they keep the region's hydrothermal activity ongoing. One of the ways they do this is to keep the plumbing system open. If the Earth doesn't quake in this region from time to time, the little fractures that are laden with the responsibility to supply heat to the geysers and hot springs would eventually be closed up by mineral deposits, and sadly, this would only affect the hydrothermal activity of the region and won't stop the supervolcano from erupting when the time comes. The earthquakes are also beneficial because they help scientists investigate the Yellowstone caldera. It turns out that the information which scientists derive from these earthquakes enable them to map out and understand the subsurface geology around and beneath Yellowstone National Park. Recently, scientists say that magma in the reservoir in the Yellowstone caldera is now double the size of what it's expected to be. Indeed, magma underneath Yellowstone is growing, and scientists attest to this, pointing to the increase in hydrothermal activities within the park. In June 2023, a new thermal feature was discovered in the Norris Geyser Basin. The Sponge Geyser feature is a small geyser that erupts every few minutes. But despite the recent seismic activities at Yellowstone, there's still no indication that a super eruption is imminent. The USGS continues to monitor the situation closely and will issue warnings if any sign of increased volcanic unrest exists. Indeed, the recent activity at Yellowstone is not cause for alarm. However, it is important to stay informed about the volcano's status and to be prepared for the possibility of an eruption. Capable hands are already in place to provide us with the needed information working tirelessly. These are the geologists and the Yellowstone National Park officials. The geologists are tasked with constantly monitoring Yellowstone National Park for signs of volcanic activity. They use tools like seismographs to measure the vibrations caused by earthquakes and other seismic events to track the movement of magma and fluids beneath the park. They also utilize GPS and other techniques to measure changes in the elevation and the shape of the land surface. They also identify areas where the ground is slowly rising or sinking, which could signify volcanic unrest. This is followed by analyzing the water in hot springs and geysers for temperature, pH, and mineral content changes. These changes can be a sign of changes in the thermal activity of the park. In addition to monitoring volcanic activity, geologists are also working to improve the understanding of Yellowstone's geology, as it will help them to better predict the future behavior of the park and to develop more effective safety measures. But it gets better. Scientists have recently developed a new technique to help measure magma buildup under the Yellowstone supervolcano. The new study was carried out by Professor Larson and his colleagues focusing solely on the plume of magma heating the rhyolite from below. By spiking hot springs with a stable radioactive isotope, they can accurately estimate the amount of magma recharging the volcano yearly. This method also helps in understanding how molten rock transfers heat to the Earth's surface, which could have implications for harnessing thermal energy reserves. So, what does the future hold for Yellowstone National Park? Well, trying to effectively predict natural phenomena, such as a volcanic eruption, 100% is not something any scientist can do. However, scientific research can give us an idea of what to expect from the Yellowstone caldera. Hence, based on scientific monitoring data, geologists have concluded that Yellowstone is unlikely to erupt anytime soon. The most recent evidence that has kept scientists hopeful is the new state-of-the-art seismic images that clearly show the raging magma underneath the Yellowstone caldera. Speaking of this picture, Michael Poland, a geophysicist who was not involved in the research, says it's like getting a better lens for your camera. Things are coming into more focus. We've come to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching till the end. What do you think about the recent events at Yellowstone National Park? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed this video, ensure to like, share, and subscribe for more.